Mr. Singh, welcome. We have already formed a quorum. Let's call the meeting to order. First of all, let's invite the team from the administration to join us. In attendance, we have the following officials from the administration. First of all, Mr. Ansin Yu, PAS for Financial Services and the Treasury. Mrs. Karen Ho, Deputy Principal Solicitor from the Companies Registry. Mrs. Christine Francis Sit, Senior Solicitor, Companies Registry, as well as Ms. Phyllis Poon, Senior Government Counsel from Department of Justice, and Ms. Cindy Chirk, Government Counsel, Department of Justice. Welcome. Item one on the agenda. Uh, well, in fact, at the meeting held on the 6th of March 2013, the subcommittee completed the scrutiny of the five pieces of subsidiary legislation, as well as the English version of the draft amendments to the Companies Directors Regulation and Companies Summary Financial Reports Regulation. In response to members' requests, the administration has submitted a paper, CB Bracket 1, 687, slash 12 to 13 bracket 02 to follow up on the issues raised at the meeting held on the 6th of March, including the Chinese version of the draft amendments to the company's director's report regulation as well as company's summary financial reports regulation. First of all, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Chuck, or, or rather Mr. Yu. Uh, would you like to um, give us a briefing on the paper? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In relation to the paper mentioned uh, by the chair, that is CB bracket 1, 687 slash 12 to 13 bracket 02, I would like to come back to a number of points raised by members last time. First of all, the reason for resignation on the part of the directors. Last time, members wondered whether the reasons of resignation well, uh, we have said that it should be in relation to the affairs of the company. Well, members asked whether this would include the following circumstances. There is the reason of resignation has to do with the affairs of the parent company or the subsidiary um, companies. I think ultimately the test is whether it has to do with the affairs of the reporting company. If the reason of resignation involves the affairs of the parent company, a subsidiary or sister companies, and if indirectly it has to do with the affairs of the reporting company, then uh, uh, we, as we have said, um, this should be included in the summary of reasons. On the contrary, if it has got nothing to do at all with the affairs of the reporting company, we don't see it is justified to ask the company to make a disclosure. Therefore, in relation to this point, we suggest that we shouldn't propose any further changes to the relevant provision. That is, if it has to do with the affairs of the company, that is the reporting company, then disclosure is needed. Paragraph 3 of my paper, the summary. We are not going to elaborate on the summary. This is because the current drafting is already clear. That is, the summary has to be fair and objective. And if the member or a member of the company's registry is of the view are of the view that um, the reasons cannot be truly reflected in the summary, then probably it is already a breach under the relevant uh, company's ordinance. So therefore, there's no need to further change the provision. Also, at the meeting last time, it was mentioned that um, there is this issue with the Chinese text of the regulation. We have already amended section 4, bracket 5, bracket A of the regulation. And that is, we have changed the wording uh, so as to align it with the English. And since we are 
doing this to the summary financial reports, we have also taken the opportunity to introduce minor amendments to Section 3, bracket 3, bracket D of the Chinese text to add the word cup. The proposed amendments to the Chinese text have been included in the regulation for detail. And the English, of course, has been reported to members last time. Uh, we have also taken the chance to tidy up the text of the Chinese version at different places. And uh, that is already included in the text. If members have no other questions, then on the 27th of March, the SFST would move a resolution for members to endorse so that we can take care of this part of the amendments. Members, any questions? If there are no questions from members, let us uh, do the clause by clause in relation to the Chinese version. Mr. Yu, are you going to take us through it? Well, actually, the Chinese text is basically the same as the English that we vetted last time. With regard to parent company, sister company, and subsidiary, we have included the specified undertaking so that we can facilitate the mention of this in part two. And then, director's interests. We have changed the mention of specified undertaking, and in light of the discussion, we have included the disclosure of the benches. And number three, after discussion, we said that we would like to reinstate the existing requirement of the CO, and that is why in Section 3, it is said that uh, if the summary is proposed, then uh, Sections 1 and 2 may not apply in respect of a company that falls within the reporting exemption of the financial company. 5A, since we are reinstating the existing requirement of CO, 5A stipulates that uh, the benches issued should be disclosed in the director's report. This is the same as in the English version. Number eight, reasons for resignation. As we said last time, the reasons for disclosure in a report will be expanded to include affairs of the company. In 8.1b, it says, the company has received a notice in writing from the director specifying the resignation or refusal is due to reasons relating to the affairs of the company. And also, in the light of previous discussion, we are saying that the written comment must be filed before disclosure is to be made in the report. In other words, uh, the company must receive a notice in writing from the director first. Number nine, uh, about the text, uh, because of the discrepancy in Chinese in section 470, we have crossed out uh, other people. But uh, we are not changing the legal effect, but uh, now it is more aligned with Section 470. Number 10, with regard to transactions, arrangement, or contract. In other words, when the director has entered into transaction, arrangement, or contract, whereby there is a material interest involved, we have explained that what we are proposing to do is that this may not be related to the reporting company, but the uh, related company or specified undertakings relating to the reporting company. If this is about transaction arrangement or contract and where there is material interest, then this must be disclosed in the report of the company. As to the reporting company's transaction arrangement or contract, that may be disclosed as a note in the financial report. And this will be taken care of in the second batch uh, where there is the stipulation about declaration of director's interest. So number 10 doesn't have to do with the reporting company, but uh, related companies to the reporting company. Okay, that's it for the Chinese version. Mr. Yu has already explained those. Members, any questions from you?
If there are no other questions, I will have to let you know the legislative timetable. The first batch, uh, the scrutiny period of it has been extended to the 27th of March. So we'll report to the House Committee on the 15th of March. That's this Friday. If you'd like to move any amendments to the subsidiary legislation, the deadline for giving notice is, since you need to give five clear days notice, the deadline for giving such notice will be the 20th of March. You get it, members? We'll make a report to the House on Friday. If you n would like to move amendments, the last day to give notice is the 20th of March. And we'll revert to the Council on the 27th of March. Okay, those are the three dates. We'll report to the House on the 15th with regard to the scrutiny of the first batch of subsidiary legislation under the company's ordinance. That will be an oral report. If there are no questions, we'll talk about the second batch of subsidiary legislation to be made under the company's ordinance. The procedure is as follows. I'd like to ask the administration, when will you be submitting the second batch of subsidiary legislation under the seal to the Legislative Council? And what will that cover? Thank you, Chairman. As we reported to the FA panel in January, the second batch covers two pieces of subsidiary legislation. First, regulation on the disclosure of director's interest and also the amendment to financial reports of companies. We are still sticking to the timetable. We'd like to gazette those on the 22nd of April and uh, submit them to the LegCo on the 27th. With regard to the remarks in the financial report of companies, uh, we are talking about the disclosure of director's remuneration and also loans taken out by directors from the company and also transactions, contracts, etc., where there is material interest relating to directors. And this is the part with regard to regulation disclosure of information about benefits of directors regulation as to the release of financial reports by companies, and after that, if they think that there should be amendments, then this regulation has to do with the procedures, the contents, and how uh, members of the companies and directors of the companies should be notified. Uh, actually, in general, they just repeat the requirements of the CO. Members, have, have you got it? Mr. Yu, can I ask you this question? As you know, uh, the third batch will take care of the more controversial uh, point of um, inspecting directors' particulars. Yes, we'll submit them in May. Okay, on the 27th of March, if the second batch will be submitted to LegCo at the Council, then the legislative timetable will be like this. On the 24th of April, we will scrutinize the second batch of the subsidiary legislation. I mean, that is the deadline for completing the scrutiny. And therefore, we will have to give a report at the House on the 12th of April. And the last day to give notice to amend the second batch will be the 17th of April. In fact, that is quite a tight schedule. It will be difficult for us to arrange meetings for scrutiny. I will therefore propose that we would apply for an extension 
at the house. I hope that the scrutiny period, if the resolution for extension is supported, will be on the 15th of May. So we will report to the House on the 3rd of May. If members would like to amend the subsidiary legislation, the deadline for giving notice will be the 8th of May. That is after extension. Oral report to the House will take place on the 3rd of May, and members will have to give notice for amendment the latest by the 8th of May, and we will go back to Council on the 15th of May. I would therefore propose to apply for an extension. It is just impossible for us to arrange meetings if we do not have an extension, and that is if we have to go back to Council on the 24th of April, it would really be too rushed, meaning that we'll have to complete scrutiny by the 12th of April. We only have a month or so. We may even only have two to three meetings, and as you know, we'll also have to s debate on the budget, so we'll have a tight schedule. Members, any questions? Thank you. In order that the subcommittee can start the scrutiny of the second batch of sublet as early as possible, the subcommittee can convene meetings as soon as possible after the 27th of March. I would propose, therefore, that the next meeting, as the Secretariat has very kindly looked at the empty slots for us, will be on the 9th of April from 8.30 to 10.30 in the morning. It's a Tuesday. Okay. On the 9th of April, we'll start to scrutinize the second batch of subsidiary legislation under the CO. The 9th of April, Tuesday, 8.30 to 10.30. Why don't we start at 11 o'clock? Well, actually, it will take place only in the afternoon. Mr. Sin, is it okay? I think we have uh, some meetings already arranged. But that will take place in the afternoon. Our meeting will be from 8.30 to 10.30. I think we are clashing with two other meetings. Doesn't matter. It's all right. We can have three meetings in parallel. Okay, we will be uh, swapping around meetings. Okay, that's it. We have been ex uh, extremely efficient. Last item, AOB. If there is nothing under AOB, the meeting is adjourned here. Thank you very much for coming.